And I have that memo here too, Madam Speaker. Along with an agreement for signature from one Warren Saunders at the High Commissioner's Office in London, advising the then Prime Minister Lester Bird here in Antigua that Bruce Rappaport had, and I quote, already signed the agreement with the Japanese in accordance with the power of attorney of 16th of March 1990, which was reconfirmed on 19th of November 1996. In that memo, the Attorney General has a copy, Madam Speaker. He's very familiar with the contents. Warren Saunders goes on to advise Lester Bird as follows, and I quote, the debt of U.S. $133.1 million, which is principal of U.S. $56.7 million plus interest and penalties, will now be the responsibility of IHI Debt Settlement Company and be repaid over 25 years at the sum of $403,334 per month. So, Madam Speaker, the Attorney General is well aware there was Warren Saunders who caused Lester Bird and the then Finance Minister Johnson Luce to sign an agreement with Rappaport committing the government to this monthly debt settlement. And then three days later in Geneva, Madam Speaker, on September the 14th, 1997, the same Warren Saunders joined Rappaport and signed an agreement with IHI. Lester Bird was in there. I wasn't even in government, so I wouldn't even bother with them. They don't care. But, Madam Speaker, even though Warren Saunders is the only individual, listen to this, with first-hand knowledge of what happened on both sides of the monthly payment discrepancy, the Attorney General has refused to name him as a defendant in that case. And the question is, why? Why has the Attorney General refused to name Warren Saunders in that case? Because like every other Queen's Counsel, the Attorney General is very well aware, Madam Speaker, that selective prosecution, especially in matters of this nature, it is not justice. It is a travesty of justice. It is criminal. It is wrong. And then, Madam Speaker, there can be no finding of fact that the AAP government facilitated Rappaport to use IHI debt settlement to take state money and give kickbacks to Left Bird or Asset Michael. Total nonsense. And you know what they do? After they file the civil case in the local courts, the UPP government then duplicate the same legislation, in the same litigation, sorry, in the Miami courts, where jurisdiction is questionable at best, and they know that. And that's why today they ask for an adjournment of three months. The sole despicable purpose, Madam Speaker, I want the people of this country to know, the sole despicable purpose of this forum shopping extravaganza is to name, shame, and stigmatize political opponents on this side. And it would fail. It's going to fail. John St. Louis is a, is a defendant in the Antigua and Barbuda matter. And he was mysteriously excluded from the Miami action. And then can you imagine the Prime Minister of this country picks up the phone, call John St. Louis and tell him he wants to go down in Manso building. That he have two white Canadian investigators here. And he must go and cooperate with them. And that's not interference. That's not interference in police work if you claim that they are police forensic experts. And you tell John St. Louis, oh, Mr. St. Louis, it's not you we after. It's left to burden us and Michael. In that regard, Madam Speaker, they have, they have engaged two of these Canadian investigators to prepare bringing criminal charges. They want to bring criminal charges against Lester Bird and Asset Michael, even as the civil matter remains in the courts. You know why? It is clear that this UPP administration has to make some kind of high-profile arrest before the next general elections. Because that was what you promised to appease those supporters that you will jail a ALP leaders and that they will be jailed before the next election. And the next election is close, so lock us up, but justice will prevail. Madam Speaker, we will overcome this cruel abuse of state power. You know why? Because God is good all the time, and all the time God is good, and I believe in God. Madam Speaker, quickly, let me turn to my constituency in wrapping up. And I want to observe, Madam Speaker, that for the past three years and nine months, the people of Piers, Parham Town, Vernon's, Gunfrop, Sugar Factory, Painters, and Fidges Creek, Lindsay's, the Mel may well have forgotten the name of Joan Messiah. The sidewalks, Madam Speaker, were overgrown. There were cassie trees to be cut in painters. 
Street lights were desperately needed. Open sewage running from the basketball court in Palom. The bathrooms in disrepair. There were no lights on the court, both in Piers and Palom. The roads, Madam Speaker, are in a despicable state, Mr. Minister. The only road in St. Peter's you have done is the Palom Main Road. What about all the side roads in Piers and Painters? And Palom and Vernon's? What about all the side roads? And I don't hear you say nothing for St. Peter's today. You say all the money you're going to spend this year, next year, and no mention of the roads of Parham and Pears and, and Fainters and Fidget Creek. What happened to those people? Madam Speaker, they don't pay taxes. What is their sin? The sin that the people of St. Peter's have committed is to send your humble servant here to represent them so they must be victimized. Madam Speaker, but whilst all this disrepair and neglect was happening in the constituency, candidate Messiah was conspicuously missing. Missing in action. And the people of the constituency were mercilessly victimized. Left, right and center. They were the first to be sent home by the Port Authority. They were the first to be sent home from public works as security men and women, as watchmen. They had trucks, private contractors. They were victimized. They were victimized, Madam Speaker, for voting the Labour Party candidate. My was candidate, Messiah, when this victimization was taking place, she was too busy traveling the globe on every little frivolous opportunity, watching whales and following whales and piling up her diamonds, <laughs> piling up her diamonds at the people's expense, Madam Speaker. But you know, today, Today, with elections around the corner, she's all over the constituency with Winston Williams, promising the people that they're going to fix up the basketball court, the football field. But they will not forget. They will not forget her record and the UPP's record of victimization and neglect for the people of St. Peter's. And you can rest assured, Madam Speaker, that the people of St. Peter's will never forget the wicked victimization that the UPP administration have meted out to them for voting the Labour Party candidate. So let me therefore now, Madam Speaker, thank the beloved people of St. Peter's for which we have built a solid foundation. We have a special bond, Madam Speaker, a bond of love and mutual respect and trust for each other that transcends any narrow political partisanship. I have developed that with the people of my constituency. And I want to thank them for the privilege of standing here and placing this blatant UPP election budget in its proper context, Madam Speaker, I'm humbled to represent those lovely people. So let me also thank, Madam Speaker, the lovely, fair people of Antigua and Barbuda who are all looking, Mr. Member for St. John's Rolise, beyond the state-sponsored UPP election propaganda Santa Claus giveaways that you're going to give us the next five-year term of the ALP rule of government. And finally, Madam Speaker, I lean on Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. Friends, Romans, countrymen, lend me your ears. I come to bury Caesar, not to praise him. The evil that men do lives after them. The good is oft interred with their bones, so let it be with Caesar. O oh, judgment! Thou art fled to brutish beasts, and men have lost their reason. For all the rampant corruption, Madam Speaker, that the UPP has brought the government on this big tent of integrity legislation, I came here today to foretell of the 2008 burial of the UPP, and not to give praise for the few good things that it may have done. Madam Speaker, as someone who has consistently advocated, advocated from burdensome UPP taxation, I embrace the liberty to say to the people of this country this evening, Madam Speaker, take all the relief, but remember the grief. Whatever you get was taken from your pocket. They didn't send you to school, but they played you for a fool. So welcome the tax break, but remember the heartache and say never again.